So today we will discuss about different types of algae. The first one is Chlorophyceae. The members of Chlorophyceae are commonly called green algae. The plant body may be unicellular, colonial, or filamentous. They are usually grass green due to the dominance of pigments chlorophyll A and B. The pigments are localized in definite chloroplasts. The chloroplasts may be discoid, plate-like, reticulate, cup-shaped, spiral or ribbon-shaped in different species. Most of the members have one or more storage bodies called pyrenoids located in the chloroplasts. Pyrenoids contain protein besides starch. Some algae may store food in the form of oil droplets. Green algae usually have a rigid cell wall made of an inner layer of cellulose and an outer layer of pectose. Vegetative reproduction usually takes place by fragmentation or by formation of different types of spores. Asexual reproduction is by flagellated zoospores produced in zoosporangia. The sexual reproduction shows considerable variation in the type and formation of sex cells and it may be isogamous, anisogamous or oogamous. Some commonly found green algae are Chlamydimonas, Volvox, Eulithrix, Spirogyra and Chara. Now let's talk about the next, that is, Pheophyceae. The members of Pheophyceae or brown algae are found primarily in marine habitats. They show great variation in size and form. They range from simple branch, filamentous forms, ectocarpus, to profusely branched forms as represented by kelps, which may reach a height of 100 meters. They possess chlorophyll A, C, carotenoids, and xanthophylls. They vary in color from olive green to various shades of brown depending upon the amount of the xanthophyll pigment, fucosanthin present in them. Food is stored as complex carbohydrates, which may be in the form of laminarine or manitol. The vegetative cells have a cellulosic wall usually covered on the outside by a gelatinous coating of algae. The protoplast contains, in addition to plastids, a centrally located vacuole and nucleus. The plant body is usually attached to the substratum by a holdfast, and has a stalk, the stipe and leaf-like photosynthetic organ, the front. Vegetative reproduction takes place by fragmentation. Asexual reproduction in most brown algae is by biflagellate zoospores that are pear-shaped and have two unequal laterally attached flagella. Sexual reproduction may be isogamous, anisogamous or oogamous. Union of gametes may take place in water or within the oogonium, oogamous species. The gametes are piriform, pear-shaped, and bear two laterally attached flagella. The common forms are ectocarpus, dictyota, laminaria, sargassum, and fucus. Let's have a lock on, rhodophyceae. The members of rhodophyceae are commonly called red algae because of the predominance of the red pigment, are phycoerythrin in their body. Majority of the red algae are marine with greater concentrations found in the warmer areas. They occur in both well-lighted regions close to the surface of water and also at great depths in oceans where relatively little light penetrates. The red thalli of most of the red algae are multicellular. Some of them have complex body organization. The food is stored as Floridian starch which is very similar to amylopectin and glycogen in structure. The red algae usually reproduce vegetatively by fragmentation. They reproduce asexually by non-motile spores and sexually by non-motile gametes. Sexual reproduction is oogamous and accompanied by complex post-fertilization developments. The common members are Polysiphonia, Porphyra, Gracilaria, and Gelidium. It's time to talk about next division of plant kingdom, Bryophytes. Bryophytes include the various mosses and liverworts that are found commonly growing in moist shaded areas in the hills. Bryophytes are also called amphibians of the plant kingdom because these plants can live in soil but are dependent on water for sexual reproduction. They usually occur in damp, humid, and shaded localities. They play an important role in plant succession on bare rock slash soil. 
The plant body of bryophytes is more differentiated than that of algae. It is talus-like and prostrate or erect, and attached to the substratum by unicellular or multicellular rhizoids. They lack true roots, stem or leaves. They may possess root-like, leaf-like or stem-like structures. The main plant body of the bryophyte is haploid. It produces gametes, hence is called a gametophyte. The sex organs in bryophytes are multicellular. The male sex organ is called antheridium. They produce biflagellate antherozoids. The female sex organ called archegonium is flask-shaped and produces a single egg. The antherozoids are released into water where they come in contact with archegonium. An antherozoid fuses with the egg to produce the zygote. Zygotes do not undergo reduction division immediately. They produce a multicellular body called a sporophyte. The sporophyte is not free-living but attached to the photosynthetic gametophyte and derives nourishment from it. Some cells of the sporophyte undergo reduction division, meiosis, to produce haploid spores. These spores germinate to produce gametophyte. Bryophytes in general are of little economic importance but some mosses provide food for herbaceous mammals, birds and other animals. Species of sphagnum, a moss, provide peat that have long been used as fuel and as packing material for transshipment of living material because of their capacity to hold water. Mosses along with lichens are the first organisms to colonize rocks and hence are of great ecological importance. They decompose rocks making the substrate suitable for the growth of higher plants. Since mosses form dense mats on the soil, they reduce the impact of falling rain and prevent soil erosion. The bryophytes are divided into liverworts and mosses. Our next division is liverworts. The liverworts grow usually in moist, shady habitats such as banks of streams, marshy ground, damp soil, bark of trees and deep in the woods. The plant body of a liverwort is thalloid, example, marchantia. The thallus is dorsiventral and closely oppressed to the substrate. The leafy members have tiny leaf-like appendages in two rows on the stem-like structures. Asexual reproduction in liverworts takes place by fragmentation of tholi or by the formation of specialized structures called gemme, sing. Gemma. Gem may are green, multicellular, asexual buds, which develop in small receptacles called gemma cups located on the tholi. The gem may become detached from the parent body and germinate to form new individuals. During sexual reproduction, male and female sex organs are produced either on the same or on different tholi. The sporophyte is differentiated into a foot, seta, and capsule. After meiosis, spores are produced within the capsule. These spores germinate to form free-living gametophytes. Mosses The predominant stage of the life cycle of a moss is the gametophyte which consists of two stages. The first stage is the protonema stage, which develops directly from a spore. It is a creeping, green, branch and frequently filamentous stage. The second stage is the leafy stage, which develops from the secondary protonema as a lateral bud. They consist of upright, slender axis bearing spirally arranged leaves. They are attached to the soil through multicellular and branch rhizoids. This stage bears the sex organs. Vegetative reproduction in mosses is by fragmentation and budding in the secondary protonema. In sexual reproduction, the sex organs antheridia and archegonia are produced at the apex of the leafy shoots. After fertilization, the zygote develops into a sporophyte, consisting of a foot, seta, and capsule. The sporophyte in mosses is more elaborate than that in liverworts. The capsule contains spores. Spores are formed after meiosis. The mosses have an elaborate mechanism of spore dispersal. Common examples of mosses are Fanaria, Polytricum, and Sphagnum. Thanks for listening the complete audiobook, don't forget to hit the like button. I'll be back with next audiobook of Plant Kingdom, soon.
Till then stay safe, stay focused.